Hello. <laughs> hello, my wonderful followers. Hello, wonderful friends. Hello, 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 hello. hello. Happy weekend. So, <laughs> you're welcome to my life. You're welcome to my life this beautiful Friday afternoon. And I want to talk about this particular subject. <laughs> one thing that can mess up a great marriage yes you've been having a great marriage for the past one year two years three years four years five years please don't make this mistake that i want to talk about for you to have a great marriage it shows that you and your spouse you are kind to one another you care for one another you cherish one another you respect one another it's not one-sided okay so Assess whether you are part of the marriages I'm talking about. If you have a partner that cares for you and you care for your partner, respects you and you respect him, you know, uh, have your best interests at that and you also have his best interests at that, then you are already having a great marriage. But you need to be careful that you don't mess up. You don't mess up that great marriage. It's possible to have a great marriage and then mess it up and then it becomes sour. Most of the marriages that you see that grew sour over the years, they didn't start that way. They started as a great marriage. Everyone respects one another, love one another, everything. Ah, you know, care for one another. You are the sugar in my tea. You are the cockroach in my cobble. You are the that eh, 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 hyping one another. <laughs> you know that kind of thing. <laughs> hyping one another. But along the line, something disrupts all those greatness and then messes up the marriage. So I want to tell you one thing that I know for sure that can mess up great marriages. Yes, you're having a great marriage now. Be very careful such that that greatness will not be messed up. This thing has been helping me for six years now and I want to give you the formula. All right. Don't take the kindness of your spouse for granted. Don't let see finish syndrome get into your marriage. To the extent you don't take your partner serious, you don't respect your partner, you take their kindness for granted, you misuse, you know. You know, let me give an example. There are some people, their spouse, very kind, very loving, always there, helpful, respectful, and all those things. Then, I don't know whether it's the devil or the demon that comes somewhere to minister to them that, if this guy is this, you know, then let me just relax and, you know, just enjoy. Let me be the receiver, the only receiver, and then without offering anything. A lot of people do take the kindness, the respectfulness, the caring nature of their spouse for granted. And it doesn't happen immediately after marriage. It happens after some period, after some years. And then you begin to feel like, oh, my husband is going away. My wife is going away. She's for me and for her. She just declared her love, his love for me so many years and all this. Then you begin to take the person for granted that is where the mess up starts from when you begin to take the kindness of your spouse of your wife of your husband for granted you don't see it as a big deal you don't you know cherish it you begin to mess up your great marriage before you know what your spouse becomes like am i crazy am i a mom or something like that and then for example maybe in the initial stage of your marriage if your husband comes back from work and buys just very little maybe facial cleanser or something very little thing you say oh my husband thank you very much ah, you are you're just perfect you're just a great man and all that then maybe after two years he comes home he buys ear clip for you you say oh my god this is so beautiful even though it's little you appreciated it and it was you know feeling on top of you like wow my wife is really appreciating even if i buy you know uh, um 15 or something for her she's going to thank me she's going to be you know appreciated so it makes effort maybe along the line see finish syndrome now happens to you your husband now buys an hairband for you and you're like I don't really like, maybe you have been seeing your friend. Is, is this what you can buy? Like, can't you buy something else? Like, you know, is this the color that you can buy? Can't you, you know, you're supposed to ask me. And then your husband is like, I'm sorry, this one, this one. And then another day, maybe he's coming back from work. He sees something that he, she's not going to appreciate it. She's not going to. And then he's coming back again. He sees that one. Says, she may not like the color. She may not like the texture. And then you begin to mess it up. The kindness, the goodness of your husband. You begin to mess it up or you are an husband maybe when your wife you finish having a romantic session and your wife made effort and then you appreciated that ah hey i had a wonderful evening ah if you can be giving me like this eh? ah my sister hey and then your husband hype you and you are like 
you are bloated, feeling on top of the world, feeling on top of the world. And then the next um, week, you did ah, another banger. <laughs> and then your husband said, hey, in fact, I'm head over here for you. And all this, then you begin to make effort and put more effort and put. Then after some time, you become used to it. Please never get used to the kindness of your spouse. That is where you begin to mess up, mess up the great marriage that you have. When you begin to see it as see finish, ah, this is how it will continue to be. And you no longer appreciate. You no longer appreciate the effort. You no longer respect. You no longer proud. You no longer hype. You see. And then she made effort one time and then you're like, ah, you just sleep off. Bam. Ah, ah. And then the woman is like, hmm. Hmm, maybe it's tired, Sha. Maybe it's tired today. I didn't really appreciate my effort. And then... Another time, after, you finish the whole, you know, and then you sleep off again. Bam, and you're like, well, this time around, say, you won't break my back, and all those kind of, and then you begin to say some comments that are, where are you learning all this from? Why are you doing this? Blah, blah, blah. And then the woman is like, maybe I'm becoming stupid. Maybe I'm taking this thing too far. Maybe I should stop putting the effort. And the whole greatness, the whole sweetness, the whole, you know, transparency the whole respect the whole thing just begin to go the downward see the thing is that great marriage don't suddenly jump from a great marriage today and jump to a bad marriage or sour marriage tomorrow it comes like a gradual it takes days weeks months eh? and then every time you are like where did our good marriage went to as in did they swap my wife <laughs> did they swap my husband and some of you be like it's not like this when i got married to him you changed him you changed. we should ask you what happened to him if she was not like that in the first three years of your marriage, then we should be also asking you, what, what happened? How did you transform an angel into a demon? <laughs> we should do interview for you, all right? So some of us, our actions, our inaction is converting our angelic husband and wife into something else. Our great marriage is becoming sour and bad because of see finish syndrome. You no longer appreciate their kindness no longer appreciate their care no longer show you know respect you now say oh she's for me yeah we are forever together you don't know that you you keep pursuing you keep doing the right things to keep the greatness to keep this sweetness it's not how you begin but how you sustain the good things that make your marriage sweet how well are you sustaining the sweetness of your marriage it is not how do you put so much energy at the beginning of your marriage. Do you know that when I first got married, I wasn't even really putting any energy. Like, my husband, we are just there. And it begins to increase. That's how it's supposed to be. But many people will start with so much energy, enthusiasm and everything. And then it begins to go like this. Go like this. So, how well do you want to sustain the sweetness of your home? How well do you want to sustain the honeymoon? All right? That is what matters. All right? How well do not allow Stephen syndrome to spoil, to mess up the greatness of your home. That is the one thing that I know that do usually mess up many great marriage. It is Stephen syndrome that will make an husband to start, you know, talking in a romantic way with another person. Yeah. Will you do that at the beginning? Most people know. So let us understand that we should continue to chase, we should continue to hype, we should continue to appreciate, we should continue to care, we should continue to respect, we should continue to appreciate all kindness, whether minute or micro or mini kindness that our spouse shows us. Don't see it as it's my right. No, it's not your right. Appreciate it. Don't see it as, if she doesn't do that to me, then why would she call her say my wife? No, she's not obligated to, but she decided to, so appreciate it. Don't say, if my husband does not pay the bills, who will? No, say appreciate him for paying the bills, you know. Yesterday when my husband credited my account, even though the money is for food and miscellaneous, and yes, of course, I will still use the money also to <laughs> take care of my looks and myself. But then I didn't say, oh, the money is for the food and the family, and I will spend like 98, 90% 90 of the money for the family. I still appreciated him. I still told him, thank you for the money. Thank you for the money. God will continue to bless you. God will... It's not because I cannot, I mean, I work. <laughs> It's not because I can't earn money for myself or I can't feed myself or it's not because maybe, yeah, he gave me one pff, mighty gigantic money that I've not seen before. But I still choose to appreciate him because he's not under obligation to credit my account. It's just a privilege. Yes. Yes. I don't, you don't say, I hold her. I hone him. I hone. The way some of you see your spouse, like material things that you hone. No. 
You still have your individuality. You are just blessed to be together. So appreciate. Don't spoil the greatness of your marriage. Don't spoil the sweetness of your marriage with your over familiarity and you know commonizing and you know seeing it as is a normal thing. Is this obligation? Is a right to give me a body? It's my right to request for a body. No, 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 no. Let's sustain the sweetness in our home by respecting our spouse, by appreciating our spouse, by not taking the kindness of our spouse for granted and not seeing it as our right. All right. So, are you out there? You've been spoiling the greatness that your marriage started with, with your attitude, ungratefulness, you know, entitlement mentality. Go ahead and change it. Your marriage can still move from sour state, from bad state to a great state. When you begin to implement thankfulness, you begin to implement, you know, hyping. <laughs> appreciating your spouse respecting your spouse i'm telling you you are going to move your marriage from a sour state to a great state so thank you very much this is matters of the heart share so that many people will listen and enjoy and we all can continue to enjoy greatness and sweetness in our home thank you very much have a nice weekend bye bye